Yeah. Okay. All right, great. I'd like to welcome everyone to the July 6th, 2023 Bellingham Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, I guess we'll have one thing up on our agenda, so I'm back to for us. And that would be the 10 Payne Street, correct? Mm -hmm. Did I um, possibly get a motion to waive the reading? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You want to come up and introduce yourself to us? The record. My name is Tom Nealon. I'm representing Mr. Derek Scott. Derek. And also with us is Ben Paz, the owner of 20 Street as well. Why don't you give us a, a quick overview of what you're looking to do here? Um, I'm going to put this under the category of a neighbor trying to help out another neighbor in that uh, these gentlemen neighbors for three or four years now uh, is um, you can tell from the material Mr. Paz is a very small lot. It's under 5,000 square feet. Uh, he's, he was looking to enlarge his lot to put in a, somewhat of a backyard and gain some privacy. So we had wrote Mr. Scott uh, about the possibility of him selling a portion of his property at 10 pinch, uh, which he agreed to do. A uh, plan was drawn, um, submitted to the planning board. They did hold a hearing for us, but asked us to come before you folks. Because of the uh, pre-existing non-conforming, essentially the size of these lots, they felt it was um, in the best interest of these folks to seek uh, a variance to reduce the size of Mr. Scott's lot. Okay. Looking at, I'm having trouble, I see on this map. You've looked at this before, right? Do you need yeah. this one? Yeah, if you don't mind, I'm trying to see where the lot lines are. Back can help a little bit. Back can help a little bit. Wow. <laughs> right, I got my wrong glasses on. <laughs> well, you do the one on the thing you like Please do. So uh, they came before the planning board for an ANR. If an approval is not required, as long as you have enough frontage, um, you can subdivide your property. Since these lots were non-conforming to begin with, and I know them as a very odd shape, uh, they're both very odd shapes. Um, planning board has to has to grant an ANR. It's approval not required. Um, as long as they have enough front. But we said, you know what? Jim, someone said, you know what? The, you guys are already non-conforming. You're creating something that's even more non-conforming. It alleviates some stuff. But it also is still non conforming for, for your own protection for the future, for the future owners of this property. Why don't you go to the zoning board and seek a variance so it's officially done the right way? So when they go to sell this some number of years from now or whatever, at least there's a variance there to sort of make it okay. So they can do this. So the, the first thing that everyone should remember is. They can do this. We're not. We're not saying yes or no. They can go to the planning board and let this happen. Okay. But this is just to, to help the town have lots that are conforming to zoning a little bit more than what they used to be. Okay. I don't know if that's accurate, Jim. Or not. So I, I, a couple of questions. So by looking at your map, possible B is the the lot that you're looking to sell. That would be the lot that. Mr. Scott would be selling to Mr. Oz. Okay. And Mr. Oz would be transferring that lot, small triangle lot A, to Mr. Scott. But when you sat through, and I'm, I'm sorry, Wolf, there's a drawing book, but we have this background on this. What is the detriment if the zoning board does not grant a variance on the slide? 
to, in other words, to the, the, the owners down the road they try to sell them. No, I think it's just it's non-conforming and further non-conforming and then they try to do anything with these properties in the future. Mm -hmm. They're it's more non-conforming. It's just my experiment. Um we didn't probably build on the technical stuff, but it's 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 just a way that it's a favor to them to give them a variance. And it's also a benefit to the town because at least these lots are going to the process and there's official records and everything like that. So that Jim, you could probably explain it better. Yeah, so uh, Brian, you, you pretty much nailed it. I mean, so practically speaking, uh, you do you have two undersized lots that don't meet zoning now, and one of them is going to become further nonconforming, so slightly smaller. Um, and so by doing this, uh, a lot of times we've you know we Amy and I deal with uh, you know lenders and and others that are saying, well. How did it get that way? And um, in order to, uh, you know, provide a future buyer or future property owner with assurances, it's always, you know, it's always best to do it uh, in a proper permitting path. Uh, as Brian mentioned, yeah, an approval not required plan subdivides certain parcels, um, and there's only so much the planning board can uh, do or say. And with this one, for instance. Uh, they're not adjusting the frontage or the adequate access to either of these sites, which is kind of the two-prong test for a planning board. Uh, so, you know, I, I think the the board did, did the proper thing in saying, hey, you know, this could, it may never, but it could be a real issue down the line because you're furthering the nonconformity. So you're making an undersized lot even smaller. Um, but, you know, practically speaking, I would say that if you're looking at these uh, two lots, uh, some benefits there are that it's creating slightly uh, more conforming lot, which is uh, I believe 20 uh, or lot yeah. two. Uh, lot two would be uh, more becoming more conforming though, not quite yet. And it also would create a slightly better shape though uh, not quite for both lot one and lot two. It's getting closer to uh, a proper shape uh, that the zoning likes to likes to create with our dimension requirements. So, you know the 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 downside if the if the board decides not to grant this, uh, you know there it may never be an issue, but it could be an issue down the line for a future property owner that um, you know his property has be has been shrunk even further than what zoning allows for which could create issues for buildability down the line and also for you know lenders and title um, concerns thank you so i guess procedurally does this go back to zoning after, i mean back to planning after our finding or it's already gone through no they planning. they they will repetition or they um, i believe they would have to go back at this point once you and jim correct me for an a and r once that's recorded with the variance or is that right so so once, yeah if the, if the zoning board does agree to grant the variance then they can bring that back to uh the planning board and it would be advisable that they write on the plan that uh, variance was granted for the reduction in lot area mm -hmm. um and then the planning board uh could endorse that a and r um, and so you have uh, a plan of record at the registry of deeds that reflects, you know, the proper path to permitting. And then I just had one other question, which I think I know the answer, but just for the sake of with the parcel B, how kind of steps that seven foot jog, is that for the propane tanks? Is that the reason? Okay. I didn't want them to be at the end of the driveway where a car or something could slide into it. I figure it doesn't really matter. I was just kind of like, like, you know, it doesn't have the clean. It looks like it was for the pro band. Yes. Right. Okay. Any thoughts? No, I have no questions. I mean, um, I, I fully understand what you folks are trying to do. And um, I suppose the one question that I thought as I was reading this this afternoon is um, the actual criteria that we hold for variance to people. Yeah. That's that. Is the stick point I come up with. Um, yeah, and, and I think this is one of these the cases where we, you know, in the past we said, you know, the board has discretion 
Yeah, this is exactly the kind of case where it's the right thing to do. You know, it, it, it's good for future owners of the property and for the town. I mean, it's certainly not detrimental to the neighborhood or yeah. the property. Um, no. It just, you're right, we have we have to use that discretion. It does not check all the boxes. You're right. And, and it's going to happen anyway. So we might as well just make it official. So question, it looks like on this then, currently there's just a vinyl fence between the two properties there where the new... Yeah, so I, I would like to point out one other thing. That's a zoning board regulation. Is that that is an eight-foot fence, which I had zoning board approval for what maybe eight years ago. So I would hope that we could just move it back to the new property line and get rid of that unusable triangle piece that's behind it now. So I, my, um, my question would be, is that a separate zoning request or could that be incorporated into this one? It's already there, it's already approved. Can it just be moved now to accommodate the new property line? It, I, I mean, I guess it could be conditioned, but I, I would think, although I, obviously other members may have different opinion, but it really would be there for your benefit because you're the abutter that would, you know, you're the one that would probably want the funds if you want the privacy from your neighbor. So I'd say it's kind of to you. I, I just want to make sure I don't need another zoning by approval to move an eight foot fence. I think it's the height. Oh, because the, the yeah. height. Which, yeah. which fence are you talking about? On the lot, on the currently between the two properties, yeah. it just lists, it notes there's a vinyl fence. So it's a fence that uh, would be abutting 30 Payne Street. All right, so you're going halfway across there now. It's my it's my back lot facing 30 Payne Street. It would be one parcel A and parcel B side to the right of the mountains. Yeah. Yeah, can we deal with this all one or do we need to deal with that? Do you think? Um, yeah, I would I would have to look back at the variance that was granted. I actually do recall uh, your application. That, that was uh, maybe about seven, eight years ago, but um we'd have to look at it and see what the wording's like uh, amy i don't know if you have a, you would have an opportunity to just take a peek at it if it's i it likely says something to the effect of an eight foot fence is granted substantially in conformance with the plan and if you're just slightly altering it uh i don't i don't think you would need to amend your decision but we we would have to uh look at that plan or that decision you have to have the decision ah uh, uh, well there you go I can go copy it. If 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 you guys want to do that, I mean, we we here. Let's take a. I can a go a copy. It, absolutely. We help yep. more all at once. All yep. the better. Sure. So thank you. Is there any questions to the April fence? Should I wait till I make it back? Oh, uh, go ahead. So if Vin were to want to extend it. Would that also require a separate action? I mean, I know it's a separate building permit to put a fence up, but if he wants to continue an eight foot fence along the business property, which is at 30 Payne Street. So he's got a lot, he's got a lot right away. He drives right along that property line to get into the back area of his building. So he's always driving trucks and he's parked the dumpster there and sometimes his campers there. So the eight foot fence is just kind of blocking that up a little bit. Yep. So if Ben wanted to extend it, if it's, you know, it's now going to be halfway along the property line. Could he extend it further if he so desired? It's not a separate zone. But on that side, going back. Eight foot fence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Keep it at the same height. I mean, he may not decide to. He can go six foot, but I mean, if he were to choose to go to eight foot, uh, right. could we handle that simply as well? Personally, I think just moving it a few feet shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. I'm altering it. I extend it. I think with that one, it sounds like the reason. Yeah. She goes back with that. It well, so, like that one you're saying it would be almost twice as much because it's going to death, right? But yeah, to whatever the law is, how far you get to the street with it. Yeah. Sure, I will, got yeah, I will say uh since since this time since the time that you applied for that variance, uh the building code has changed. You can go seven feet now, uh, without a without a variance instead of six feet. Uh so you know. Maybe if you if you wanted to extend it and you just do it seven feet, you wouldn't need to do, you know, seek any relief. Okay, so what I'm hearing though is 
if he were to go to eight foot and keep it the same height, he'd come back to the zoning board and get approved. Uh, my, unless we read something different in the original, my gut feeling is it's an alteration of it. Okay. But you go to seven feet, there's still what you need. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, just question on the fence. Yeah, smoke them if you go. <laughs> so they have more names, thank you. Dan, he has been for a long time. I have to say it's very nice being the only uh, doctor. <laughs> I've been here to wait until like 10 o'clock at night sometimes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you're moving, right? I am, yes. Where are you going? Uh, uh, Central New York State. Oh. Is that where I grew up? I hopped in my mom up. Okay. 89. great. Thank you. 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 you. Thank 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 Shall be conducted substantially in accordance with the plan. Uh, that's it. I think it it too is the abutting. It says parcel line abutting thirty Payne Street. That's the line. That's the right basis. next. Okay, and then the other thing I was wondering is when I was reading this, um, Jim, we don't have to worry about any setbacks for that fence. No, nope, no, set, no, no setbacks. Perfect. Okay. Or not. Nope. There isn't a lot of language. No. And the detail was in the plan. Yes, uh, sure. Bank on that side. Yep. Yep. I mean, we could also just keep this in with the record with this file. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I guess I can. You guys are all set. Open up to the public. Anyone in the public? Questions about <laughs> it? Crickets. Crickets. Second. All in favor? Okay. Jim, is there any sort of conditioning that we should include? No, no. I would I would just say that it's, you know, any any decision rendered, if you're going to approve it, that it reflects it's again it's substantially in the conformance with the plan provided. Uh, and just being specific, it is the reduction of lot or lot area uh, reduction from 10,555 square feet to 8,905.65 square feet um, is all. I'll move to approve it subject to what Jim just said. I guess second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so what I'd like to do is, you know, Jim, you and I can get that. I'd like to file it if we can, maybe Monday <laughs> or Tuesday, Jim, if that works. Um, and then once I get that filed, there's 20 days. I'm going to try to really get you on. I don't know if we have the 20 days before the April 10th planning board meeting, but then, you know, you can obviously get on for that a &R, hopefully in August. But Okay, so it, when you were here last month, I thought we were hoping to try to get into next week's planning board without a resubmission of the NR. The, the problem is there's still a 20 day appeal period on the decision. Oh. And so, um, unless Jim, I mean, is that something that there is a 20 day appeal with the decision? Um, but I could put it on the planning board agenda, but I, I we, I don't know, Jim, what's your guidance on that? I mean, there is that appeal period. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's up to the applicant. Yep. Right. That they they can move forward. Uh, you know, uh, as they if they want to submit for the next meeting, they certainly they still, certainly well within the rights to do so. 
Yep. So, so man, can we come next week and then if, if there's still a go period if nothing happens? Sure, if that's that's the way you want to go. I can certainly get you on that agenda. We can even touch bases on that tomorrow. We could just zip up the ZBA. We can figure out that tomorrow too, if that works. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have to be officially took, but I have the motion in the second. Can you do one more time the aye all, all in favor? favor. Aye. 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 Okay, so that's unanimous. Okay, good. And that's it. We don't have the minutes yet, so we'll do those at our next meeting. Cool. And really? that's it. Wow. I get a motion. Thank you, Jim. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Cool.